Welcome to Bare Bones Camera, where we share the ins and outs of cinematography, breaking down real setups, and taking you behind the scenes on professional film shoots. Today's show is sponsored by Kinefinity, Movecam, and Atlas Lens Company. Hey everyone, my name is Lee Lisbo Underwood. I'm a cinematographer, and today I'll be chatting a little bit about the lighting choices we made on the short film Flight. On the last video on this channel, I talked about shooting Flight in Anamorphic on the Mavo LF and Atlas Orion lenses. If you like, check that out by following the link on your screen. In this episode, we'll have a look at the lighting tools that we used on Flight and why lighting on a low budget has become so much more versatile, powerful, and portable than just five or 10 years ago. The main reason is, you guessed it, LEDs. LED technology has come a really long way from the first panels around 10 years ago, which were notorious for bad color reproduction and output and green cast and all sorts of things. But since then, the technology has improved dramatically and gotten way cheaper, and this has opened up so many new possibilities for lighting on a budget, even off of a battery. The small size of an LED means that there are lots of new and very useful types of fixtures that were not possible before. So on flight, our lighting package relied on a combination of LEDs and HMI sources. LEDs usually as a soft key or fill source, and HMIs for more power, usually through the windows. Our main LED kit was three flexible LED panels from CineReady and Falcon Eyes, which are useful because they're super thin, light, bendable, they can fit anywhere and be folded and shaped, and they can even run on V-mount batteries. With a soft box and a fabric grid, they create a very nice directional soft light. The largest one that we worked with even had a RGBW capability, uh, which eliminated the need for gels. Very useful. We also used a Quasar Q-Lion lamp, which is a one foot LED tube light with a built-in battery and nice soft output and a very small LED brick light in addition. Both of those were daylight and tungsten switchable and dimmable, of course. On the HMI side, we had a mix between 4Ks, 2.5Ks, uh, as well as a 1200 and a 575. So in this setup, our approach was to augment existing lighting with our LED and HMI units. Uh, this large space, which was designed to look like passport control in an Armenian airport, uh, but in real life is actually a hospital clinic, would have been nearly impossible to light from scratch. So instead, we left most of the room's existing overhead lighting on to get a base exposure, um, although we did turn off some of the lights closer to camera to create some contrast. This lighting was actually a warm LED light, uh, but its color reproduction wasn't so great, so we knew we needed to use our own units uh, for the main areas of action. The flexible LED panels worked as key lights from above. We used a 2x2 two two flexible panel as the main key, doing double duty as a top light for the officer and more of a high frontal key light for the protagonist. Maintaining good skin tones on the actors was essential, and these LED panels have a very high CRI, which allows them to reproduce those subtleties of color really nicely. In the background of the set, we used our HMIs to create the feeling of daylight outside and down the halls off screen. Unfortunately, our budget limited us only to house power, which in Armenia, like in most European countries, is 16 amps and 220 volts, which means that a 2.5K HMI is basically the biggest unit that you can power. So we had two of those uh, outside the window, which is really not nearly enough power to create the feeling of direct sun pouring into the room, uh, but it did at least pop the background out a little bit to suggest daylight outside. Uh, 1200 in one hallway with a frame of diffusion and a 575 into the ceiling in the other filled in the rest. To me, the resulting feeling is a kind of grungy, artificial, hostile space that doesn't get much light from outside, which fits the mood of the scene. Um, this is where our protagonist arrives at her destination after being deported. Let's look at another setup that was particularly challenging, the airplane interior. So shooting on a real commercial airplane is, of course, next to impossible, uh, logistically, financially, and practically, especially for a low-budget project. Action! 
working with a full-sized crew in such a confined space is, is really, really difficult. Luckily, our production team uh, did find a charter jet that was undergoing repairs and could be filmed in for an entire day, uh, which was great luck and definitely an exciting experience for the large team of uh, background performers. But lighting at a 737 with just a few lights is woof, another challenge. So here again, we decided uh, that we needed to make use of the existing daylight wherever we could, planning our day carefully so that we'd have beautiful direct sunlight uh, when it counted. On these shots where the protagonist finds her seat, which are some of the widest and deepest shots, uh, we made sure to shoot in the middle of the day so that we'd have even light throughout the plane. In some spots on our walk, uh, a lot of that light does get blocked, so we added some fill using the Q-Line lamp. To make it feel like this was just more ambient light and not a direct, ugly source, we mounted it on the camera and bounced it into the ceiling, so that it would be present, but not really noticeable. An even bigger challenge came when we ran out of daylight, uh, but still had daylight scenes to shoot. Uh, we did plan for this, um, so for that part of the day, we limited ourselves to just the tighter shots where we see less depth of the plane and only a limited number of windows so that we would be able to light through them with our HMIs. Despite some early challenges with the high voltage power source and the tarmac uh, not quite working, we did eventually manage to power two 4K HMIs and we put them through a butterfly with thick diffusion into the windows to continue that daylight feel that we had established. On the inside of the plane, we used the flexible LED panels coming from the opposite side of the plane. This worked great because the flexible panels could fit in really tight spaces, so we could place them accurately to recreate that look of indirect light coming through each window. Here are a few more looks at the footage from the short film flight, and I've included some notes about the lighting setups that we used. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out the other video uh, about the process of shooting flight in anamorphic. And make sure to subscribe to the Bare Bones Camera channel for more behind the scenes looks at cinematography and filmmaking technology on set. Thanks again to our sponsors, Kinefinity, Movecam, and Atlas Lens Company. This is Lee Lijbo Underwood for Bare Bones Camera, signing off. <laughs>